Okay, can everybody hear me? Everybody can hear me. I don't want to get too close. Francis, could you do me a favor? The one for me, pull it back just a little bit. The one the slide all the way down the long. There you go. Is that better? Everybody can still hear me and, and nothing. Thank you very much, Francis. We are running short of people today to try and get things done. Welcome back to church. It has been a very, very interesting and eventful couple of weeks. Starting with me, back, I got a Christmas present, not necessarily a wonderful Christmas present, but I got COVID. So today, just uh, up to you guys, I'll let you make your own decisions on wearing mask or not wearing mask. During communion, I will have a mask on. Okay, just to let you know that. I have tested negative since four days after Christmas or something like that, 28th or 29th. I've tested negative three times. My wife, Juanita, she does not have COVID. She's home with bronchitis. So to prevent her coughing and stuff like that and trying to get some sleep, trying she's on meds and stuff like that. Pastor Nancy got COVID. She has since tested negative. But Scott has COVID. So it is going around again. So again, I, I appreciate you all being here. Um, again, I'll let you make your own decision on mask wearing. Um, there's a lot of people are saying that well, out public and indoors, it's probably a good idea. Um, it is on the decline, but it seems like flu is on the way up. So, welcome to worship today. I'm glad that you're all here. I'm glad that you're all safe. The rain, we've been raining and wanting and wanting and wanting rain. Now people are saying we're getting too much. I don't think we are, but it's going to start again, and it's going to start again today. And it's going to be pretty challenging over the next week. So take that into consideration on all of your travel plans and stuff like that, okay? Today, Jesus' baptism in the waters of the, or of the Jordan. Great thing. But the question that I ask is, why did Jesus need to be baptized? This is stuff that I will try and explain to you in my message today, trying to give you another look what happened when Jesus stood in line with all the sinners on the banks of the Jordan waiting to get baptized by John. So I ask you to stand as you are able as we open the service today in the name of the Father, who is Holy and Holy Spirit. Blessed is the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's memory, let us confess our sins. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world, you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. And we'll start with our opening song, our gathering song, Shall We Gather at the River.
2 verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burnt wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will give to no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. Please read responsively Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, and the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in light, lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as the king forever. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. Our second lesson today is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power how he went about doing a good and healing doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him we are witnesses to all that he did both in judea and in jerusalem they put him to death by hanging him on a tree but god raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people not to all the people but to us who were chosen by god as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life.
Holy Gospel in accordance with Matthew in the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us to, in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of, the, of a God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be comfortable. Hopefully, we won't get any feedback. How good are people in this crowd at remembering dates? I know I'm not. But one thing is, can you remember the date that you were baptized? Yeah, I see a lot of head shaking and stuff like that. And as you can recall, my baptism was here in this church not very long ago, and I can't remember exactly the, the date. So <laughs> it's written down on the candle that I have at home. I'm going to throw a date out there. July 20th, 1969. Moon landing. See, we remember dates. Do you remember where you were when that happened? I know I was underneath. We had this couch that folded up into a bed. And I can remember being not on the bed, underneath it, watching television and everything else that was going on. Fifty years ago, over 50 years ago, U.S. astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first Merton merchant merchant, the first astronaut to sit there and put a bootstep on the moon. And when he did that, he said, that is one small step for man, that is one giant leap for mankind. Pretty bold statement. Armstrong, of course, meant that the distance from the bottom rung of the lunar lander to the moon's surface was not very far. Nothing but a small step. But for Armstrong to be in such a position to be able to step on the moon meant a giant leap in mankind's technological ability. The mission to the moon had involved 400,000 engineers, technicians, scientists, from 20,000 companies, and the military at a cost of, 100, a cost of $180 billion in today's dollars. Do you know that we, we, we still ben, we benefit from the sum of the stuff that happened during that time in 1969? Technology invented for the lunar mission has found its way into our own lives. Things like better shock absorbers for shoes. Have you seen those tennis shoes that got shock absorbers? Cordless drills. Miniature heart monitors. And a dozen other inventions. Armstrong's moon landing pronouncement, therefore, was not overstated. Around 2,000 years before Armstrong stepped on the moon, another man took a small step which resulted in even a greater leap for mankind. 
when Jesus waded into the Jordan River to be baptized, both he and we were forever changed. I would like to try and explain how Jesus' baptism was one small step for the man God and one giant leap for mankind. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the birth of Jesus. We hit the fast forward button and we're now 30 years later. 30 years when Jesus came to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. But when he made his request, as we heard in the, in the reading, I need to be baptized, John, John objected. John said, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus' desire for baptism was as strange if I asked one of you to bleach a white shirt that I just bought. You'd probably say to me, would you be nuts? I mean, it's already snow white. And so was Jesus. Not a speck of sin clung to him. Why did he need to be baptized? John's objection highlights the truth that baptism is not just a mere ceremony. It does something. It washes away sin in accordance with God's promise. So why would John or Jesus, the sinless Son of God, request baptism? Jesus, Jesus did acknowledge John's objection, but stated, "Let it be no, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness." This has made, made a lot of questions for me. Okay, what did Jesus mean? would fulfill all righteousness. It cannot mean that Jesus wanted to be baptized because this was another item on the to-do list for Jesus, from God. And what, that wasn't the reason. If it was, if it was in fact, a check mark for the to-do list, John would have praised Jesus for desiring baptism. Like Jesus, we do not seek, seek baptism simply because this is what God has told us to do. Yeah, he has, of course, told us to do this. We can go into the first chapter of John and, and read about it. But it's not to test our faithfulness. Believe it or not, is to assure us of his faithfulness. Baptism is not what we do for God, is what God does for us. Why then would we want to reject or even put off receiving the blessings of baptism? Some people do that. When they do not know what the blessings of baptism are. So getting, so before I go off on a tangent, but getting back to today's reading, I can tell you that Jesus' one small step into the Jordan River was indeed a giant leap for mankind. 
when Jesus told John that he needed to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, what he meant can be easily understood if we picture the scene where Jesus was. Since all of Judea was coming out to be baptized by John, there must have been hundreds of people standing in line, waiting their turn. Among those sinners now stood Jesus, the sinless Son of God, who had no need for baptism. So we ask again, what's he doing there? He didn't belong. But again, Jesus didn't belong in a lot of places that we find him during his earthly ministry. He didn't belong in a manger as a helpless babe. And he certainly didn't belong on the cross dying like a common thief. What was he doing in those places? He was saving us from sin by taking our place. That is also why Jordan, Jesus stepped into the Jordan River. He was signaling his intent to take our place under God's judgment. Now, if I was a director of a movie about this, I would have told Jesus to walk on water instead of stepping into it. After all, John already had everybody whipped up into a frenzy about the coming Messiah. But can you imagine what a grand entrance it would have been if Jesus would have chosen at that time to walk on water? But it was harder for Jesus to walk into the water of the Jordan than it was for him to walk on the water. Why? Because of the hundreds of sinners that have been in that water before Jesus. How clean do you suppose the water was? And I'm not talking about the sweat and the grime that would have washed off that was now forming these glistening eddy pools around John. I'm talking about the sin that was washed off with the application of baptism. Sin, which Jesus, as a son of God, would have detected with his all-knowing eyes, and sin what, that would have turned his stomach as a holy one of God. It looked like a small step into the Jordan River for Jesus to take out, take, but in reality, it was a plunge into hell. Because eventually all those sins would stick to him instead of us. That's why the one small step into the Jordan River was a giant leap for mankind that brought us to God. And God the Father did make his presence known that day. When Jesus stepped out of the Jordan River, the heavens ripped open and God the Father spoke, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You know, you know, normally parents are not really happy when their children hang out with bad kids. But not the Heavenly Father. He was glad that his son had chosen to identify himself with sinners. 
For it was this very reason the Father had sent His Son into the world so He could save all the rebellious sinners. The Father was pleased with Jesus. But are we? Not always. We often charge Him with neglect. And sometimes we grumble when we have to get up early in the morning and shuffle off to church when it's raining or it's cold outside. What time is it? But look at what Jesus did. It saved us from hell by taking our place. If he has done that, what won't he do for you? Be pleased with Jesus, just as the Father was. The Father's pronouncement was important for another reason. It would bring Jesus encouragement. When Satan or a wicked man would later challenge Jesus, saying, if you are God's son, Jesus could, Jesus could look back at his baptism and say to himself, I am God's son. He said so at my baptism. But would Jesus really need that kind of comfort and encouragement? After all, he is the son of God. He knew who he was and where he came from. But as a true man, Jesus also needed to rely on his heavenly father. That is why he was probably praying after his baptism. Now we don't know what Jesus said in his prayer. But can we doubt that he was thinking about the great work that he had now begun and was asking his father to give him joy in that work and faithfulness to do it to the bitter end. If this is what Jesus prayed, the Father answered immediately by sending the Holy Spirit who drifted down onto Jesus in the guise of a dove. Endowed with the fullness of the Spirit, Jesus was now equipped for his awesome, awesome task of redeeming sinners. Jesus' baptism, it being different from ours in the terms of need, it is the same in the terms of effect. At your baptism, you too were declared a child of God. Therefore, when Satan gets to you to question your relationship with God, you can always look back at your baptism and reply with confidence, I am God's child. He told me at my baptism. Your relationship with God does not depend upon your feelings. You, not, you may not feel God's presence on a particular day. But that feeling is not reality. What is real is what has God has said as your, at your baptism. Another way in which your baptism is the same as Jesus' baptism is that you too receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just as the Holy Spirit strengthened Jesus for his God-given mission, he will strengthen you for your God-given mission of living a righteous life and saying no to sin and temptation. Because of baptism, you and I are God's children. 
and we have eternal life. And because of baptism, we can be patient, forgiving, pure thought, word, and deed, because the Holy Spirit is our helper too. But what happens if we should fall away from the faith? What do you think? Have we lost our baptism? No. For while we can walk away from the blessings that God gives us in our baptism, our rejection of him does not cause his rejection of us. Just as the Father said in the parable, in that parable, never stop thinking about loving his prodigal son. Our Heavenly Father never stops thinking about and loving us even when we stray from Him. That does mean, of course, that all those who are baptized will make it to heaven. <laughs> Sadly, no. There are many baptized people in hell. Why? Because they continue to spurn God's grace until their dying day. But what if we should fall away and then repent our sins? Is there a need to be rebaptized? God's love, mercy, and forgiveness are just as valid as it was on the day that you were baptized. When you come forward for communion today, I invite you to put your fingertips in the font and remember your baptism and do so with a prayer. Pray that the Holy Spirit will indeed equip you to fight whatever temptations that you're currently struggling with. And pray for those who are not here today for any reason to put their fingers in the pot. Pray that God would bring them back soon to listen to his word. Jesus was baptized to show that he came to be with us. And even more than that, he was baptized to become one of us so that we could become like him. When Jesus stepped into the waters of the Jordan, I doubt many people took notice. But that one small step for the man God was one giant leap for mankind. Thanks to Jesus' baptism and our own, we have a new status and a new purpose. And best of all, we have a new home in heaven. Amen. Please stand as you're able.
as I said at the beginning, it's been a tough week. It's been a tough couple of weeks. And I'd like for you to take a look at our grace notes that list of prayer requests. Um, Margaret Anderson passed away on the 1st of January. So we want to hold our family uh, in our hearts and help them. And, and we'll let you know later when there's a, a possibility of, of this coming Friday. Okay, Friday, this coming Friday, at 2.30 in the afternoon, Calvary Chapel, Ventura, okay? no, I'm sorry, Calvary Chapel here on Eastman, just off of Rose. Oh, okay, I know what's up. I know what's up. So 2.30 this coming Friday, there's going to be a service at Calvary Chapel. So if you can attend. It would be nice if you can't hold the time in your mind and in your hearts and obviously hold the family. Anybody else? God, everybody can be sad. It, it, it's, it's, ah, especially with the word cancer. And, and as, as you may not know or may, may know, I lost my mom to cancer. So cancer is a thing that really, if I could fix anything and wish anything happened, would be to, and make cancer go away. But, you know, it is what it is. So we pray for the families. We pray for the doctors, the technicians, the scientists to help cure this issue. Is there anybody online? No? That's all right. If they're there, they're there. If they're not, they're not. As you can tell, we are still struggling. We need all the people. Hey, people. Am I waiting? Can you see me? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Glad that you're here. Glad that you can be with us through this technology. I say this all the time, that this technology does one thing. It brings us all together. I still look forward to the time that all of you, all of you, can keep up and come back here and visit us inside these walls. But we always preach that we want our feelings and our saying and our word of God to pass outside of these walls. And this is one way that it happens. Let us pray. Call together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and our minds to the new things that you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip the baptized for your reconciling and redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect our oceans, our rivers and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands 
and to communities without access to safe water. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous God, your mercy, I'm sorry, you're never wearying in establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equality, equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in the military, for peacemakers, and our enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. He is sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain our health care workers, caregivers, first responders, responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis. Lord, in your mercy. Blessing God, in Christ, you gather the beloved community, kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. Accompany newly baptized, those recently ordained, and any beginning a new ministry. Inspire synodical leaders and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Promising God, your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ, trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we bring to you our needs and our hopes. Trusting in your wisdom and your power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share as you feel comfortable.
in Virginia to be so grateful for all the generosity that you provide. Again, with COVID peeking its head out, we are not passing the plates. The plates are at the rear of the sanctuary for offerings if you wish to make them. For those that are online, again, you can do this online or you can do not. Your generosity, your hope, and your faith is what keeps us going. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened us open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in our name. God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who, who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for coming, for his coming into the world, to fulfill us the pure, holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Let's join together singing Lamb of God. And when that is complete, the table is ready for everyone. Come to the banquet. Please stand as you're able. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Announcements. Um, it's time to uh, put away Christmas. Uh, if anybody would like a poinsettia or two or three or four, please feel free to take one. If you want to, for those online, if you would like a poinsettia, one, two, three, four, please let uh, Julie Jensen know or myself, and Julie will deliver them. 
I'll put it in the chat right now if you want a poinsettia or two, and then Julie will deliver them. Um, if anybody can volunteer after church, we're going to take the decorations off the tree. So if you can help for a few minutes, we'd greatly appreciate that. For council members, uh, the meeting tomorrow will be on Zoom only. I finally made a decision on that. Bruce is not feeling well. I'm sure Pastor is, is uh, still recovering a little bit. And it's supposed to rain really hard. So um, we'll do council on Zoom. I will send out an email. And this coming Saturday, the 14th, January 14th, is dinner church at 5 o'clock. So far, I think we will have it. Um, if anything changes, we will let people know. Um, with COVID and everything, it's been quite a challenge. <laughs> and the flu and all the other viruses that are out there. So um, as far as it goes now, we will have dinner church on Saturday at 5 o'clock. Arlen? Both my grandchildren, they were here before church, Alex and Sarah, they both got COVID. They're, they're both clear now, but still, you really worry about the ones that are young that are not old enough to really have the medicines that somebody like I have. So we do welcome any prayers. We thank any prayers for everybody that's under the weather and stuff like that, and I do like to remind everybody, please, please, be careful with the weather. Yeah, is there any birthdays? Rob and Trivet? As I said, we miss you truly a child of God. Francis has done everything for us today. Thank you, Francis, very much. I knew you could handle it. I had no doubt. That gives us more of an excuse to say, you got it. Please stand for the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and hope uphold you today and always. And we go out singing, Go, my children, with my blessing.
and peace all of the way of Jesus.